All right. Hello, hello, all. Hello, friends. We're back. We are present. Time for a <laughs> spooky Sunday. Um, so, yeah, Spirit Hunter NG tonight. Um, I'm Kels. I play our protagonist and random security people. Oh, yeah, and Ami when she shows up once a chapter. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's about it. Yeah, because uh, my name is Lemur, and I play everybody else. Woo! Everybody. <laughs> um, so, yes. We should be getting to the conclusion of this uh, chapter. Um, and this is where I would definitely like to remind you that um, I do actively enjoy horror media i promise i'm having fun even when it sounds like i'm not it's just how i like to consume this kind of thing um and it is my fault that we have the extra scary mode on yes i did decide that i probably would have peer pressured you into it anyways but uh um... probably <laughs> <sighs> look peer pressure is bad kids unless it's just scaring your friend halfway across the u.s uh <laughs> Oh, goodness. But yeah, so I think we should be able to... Well, we were really close to finishing the other night, but it was so late it that was. Um, we needed, we all needed to go to bed. Um, <laughs> because the world does not stop just because... Just because of our best fictional ghost. Buddy here, yeah, our bestest buddy here is being haunted by a doll. Yeah. Um, Too bad, though. Yeah, that would be great. Be like, can if I called my boss and be like, hey, so, um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't come in. <laughs> I was ghost hunting really late last night. I'm exactly. sure she would love that. <laughs> I think you should try it at least once. Like, although that's like one of those things, like, you put in your two week notice, and then after that, it's like, hey, I can't come in. I was ghost hunting. <laughs> Well, I am I am going to the Winchester Mystery House um, in San Jose here coming up pretty soon. So I might see a ghost there. Ooh, fancy. So So you will have to tell us if it's anything like this. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. I got the first time. The one and only time uh, I've been there until this month. Um <laughs> was uh when i was in middle school um and i don't think i saw anything oh that's disappointing it's very disappointing i'm hoping that um watcher who uh they used to be the guys behind buzzfeed unsolved if you've ever watched that um they just did an episode of their show ghost files at the winchester so i'm hoping that maybe like that's kind of like stirred up some energy and maybe they pissed Sarah Winchester off and I can perfect she can haunt me for an evening there you go so I've always wanted to be haunted at least a little bit and nothing has ever happened to me so no that my um (laughs) when my uh my grandma died recently and uh, everybody was just like, oh, she's watching over you. And my response has been like, I, I hope not. <laughs> um, I don't want to be haunted by my grandma. I'd rather be haunted. Like, I love I love my grandma very much. Um, but uh, I, <laughs> of all of the spirits to haunt me, I don't want it to be my grandma. Yeah, it, it's a little less cool, you know, like when there's shit rattling in the cupboards, you know, and someone comes over and it's like, oh, it's a ghost. No, that's just grandma. That's just grandma. Yeah, uh, a little anticlimactic. So much less fun. Uh, anyway. Anyway. Uh, would you like to play a game? Sure, let's do it. <laughs> so we're going to do a couple of rounds of uh, our favorite game, Pick Your Poison. Um, the game where we nitpick the shit out of every single card. and We, we go through loop become holes. a better fucking lawyer than Phoenix, right? <laughs> All right. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Well, um, so our first options, our choices are, would you rather never speak to the last pers- person you texted ever again? 
which for me is you, um, <laughs> <laughs> or <laughs> permanently sound like you just inhaled helium. I'm trying so to remember chipmunk who the... voice, or you, whoever was the last person you texted, you can't ever speak to them again. I'm trying to see who the last person I texted was. Give me a second. Okay, well, technically, I've received texts since I texted you, but I didn't respond. I'm assuming, like, it has to be you texting the other person. Yes, that's what... So, never speak to the the last person you texted ever again. So, that's where it's like, um, I like, I've been... I got a whole bunch of texts from somebody else, but she texted me, mm-hmm. and I have not responded. So, that's where I... I I texted you that um and then we ended up not being on time. But yeah. uh <laughs> that we could be on time. <laughs> See like the last I mean quote unquote person I texted was I had to text a confirmation for a two factor authentication thing. I don't think that counts. Oh boo. <laughs> <laughs> Is it me then? <laughs> yeah, I think it would. It has to be you then. So you know, I mean, I literally did have to text. Like, just putting that out there. Um, yeah. Okay. I did send an actual text message. So. I. Yeah, everyone would get used to my new voice eventually. I can't go without speaking to my mom ever again. Fair, dude. Yeah, I would rather do chipmunk voice. <laughs> is that why you were late uh texting a reminder to be on time i was late because i was getting dinner <laughs> and then um i had to clean something up in my kitchen but that's why anyway um i'd rather have chipmunk voice yeah yeah if i if it can't be the like random number that they sent me the two-factor authentication on because i would happily never text that number again it's like a six digit number i don't even think that phone number actually exists um <laughs> mm-hmm. if i have to like restrict that um then yeah i'll take the chipmunk voice mm-hmm. like it's not gonna be like i'm already a woman in tech no one takes me seriously anyways like <laughs> that the yeah, fucking chipmunk. That, yeah, chipmunk voice. exactly i think that one ended up being pretty easy yeah, pretty easy. All right. Would you rather mm-hmm. be unable to eat anything unless it's between the hours of 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. or be below average at everything? Maverick, get out of there. That one's hard. I would like to, I would like to argue that the time span between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m., are, I, was Is that assuming that it's your current time zone? Because there are lots of times. I mean, I would assume that that is the <laughs> intent of the question is that it's your yeah. time zone. Um, <laughs> otherwise, you could just eat 24 hours a day. That one doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, yeah. Hey, that's See, chat took my, my line. I was going to say I'm already below average at everything, too. <gasps> uh, <laughs> see, I'm stuck. Because, like... I'm anemic, so I literally have to eat at least once a day, generally at not at 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, mm-hmm. So if I don't eat, I'll die. But also, <laughs> if I'm below average at everything, that also means I'm below average at my criminal activity, and that's not okay either. <laughs> I'll get caught then. Unless I'm below average at getting caught at poli- got caught by the police too, in which, does that work that way? don't know <laughs> yeah i think i'd i'd be okay with um because that's such a weird time it between is. 2 a.m and 4 a.m right yeah yeah a.m and a.m i mean plus like you could never do like delivery Mm-hmm. no one's open between 2 and 4 a.m so like you're always going to have to cook for yourself no one wants to have, like, birthday cake at 2 o'clock in the morning. Like, hey, can you wait to have your birthday cake? Um, mm-hmm. Like, you would miss so much of the social stuff. 
Yeah. Then again, if you're below average at everything, you would then be below average at socializing too. So I don't know how much social stuff you would actually get invited to, but I'm already below average at being <laughs> social. So I have, <laughs> well, that's not true. I was going to say I have two friends. No, that's not true. I have three whole friends. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Which I feel like is a lot. I mean, for our age, yeah. Um, <laughs> like, literally, I think about it sometimes. Like, people in, literally invite, like, 200 people to a wedding. I don't mm -hmm. have 200 people that if you put a gun to my head, I would want to spend any time with. Yeah. No, um, I would like to say probably six is more accurate. <laughs> Though I am friends with her, the... I would say six and seven are married. So yeah, <laughs> she's a bonus. Seven is bonus because she's married to my friend. I have to ask her, your dogs in the number or not? No, you don't have to answer that, but <laughs> they're people, <laughs> they're people. Uh, are the friends in the people. room with us right now? Um... No. <laughs> Those are my children. <laughs> <laughs> and people say I'm mean. It's fine. Um, <laughs> Never stop. I don't have to convince my friends, Maverick, to not eat my food. <laughs> um, that's not true. Um, let's see. I like being good at the few things that I'm good at. I'll chalk up... Uh, I'll chalk up the timing limit to a health restriction that other people have to accommodate for. And I will define the time restriction for eating and starting at two on one day <laughs> next week. There you go. It didn't say like the, the same, it just between those hours. Yeah. So you can kind of yada yada your way out of it. Yeah. It would suck though. Uh, Cause when does, when time changes happen? Two o'clock in the morning, isn't it? Is it, isn't it at two o'clock in the morning? Yeah. So then one day a year you would get, would you get that extra hour or does it shift? I think it, like, I think it goes from like one fifty nine to 3 a.m. So you would lose an hour, I think. And then the other way it would be like one fifty nine to one. I don't know. I don't I know. know how that works. <laughs> um, it doesn't make sense. Si time <laughs> is. Relevant. Yeah, time is uh, a social construct, um, which is why <laughs> it doesn't matter, and I will just redefine time so that three times a day, 2 a.m. happens. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Love it. All right. Um, would you rather mm -hmm. only be able to communicate by shouting as loudly as you can, or... Sit on uh, sit for twelve hours on an airplane next to two babies with the flu. I might go with the babies. I have probably done that before. <laughs> yeah, Maverick. Well, and okay, so babies are different than toddlers. I would well, I would not want to sit next to toddlers who are sick. Because babies, you know, like, they're pretty, like, self-contained still. Mm -hmm. Toddlers are when they start putting their mouth on shit. Yeah. I mean, babies will just cry the whole time, I assume. Yeah. They're not sleeping through that, so. Um, well, I mean, you could give them, like, little medicine and knock them out or whatever, like, and help them with that kind of stuff, but. I mean, do babies have flu medicine? I obviously do not yeah. have a baby, so, you know, like, <laughs> I can't like say I've ever... Like known babies that have the flu i just know that like there's certain things you can't give like infants yeah but they have like baby versions of oh. certain medicines yeah but i mean enough i have my mask on i'll be fine yeah yeah my immune system is better than babies i'll take that hit <laughs> yeah i mean like i have probably already done that at least once before in my life like What's new? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, see, that's assuming that you don't know the two babies. Uh, I would be very wary of a random stranger on a plane giving medicine to my baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think the no, implication just... is we don't know before we get on the airplane that there's going to be two babies. Because let me just say, I okay. can pack a head. <laughs> yeah, no, the 12 hour. Yeah, I agree. The 12 mm -hmm. hours sitting would be the worst part. 
Yeah. But as we have discussed previously, I will be more likely to choose the one-time thing. Yeah. Than only be able to eludes that I would have to be shouting forever. Yeah. And I hate that. So, yeah, no, I would much rather... And like I said, like, children are all little plate rats, but... <laughs> Uh, coming from somebody who does actually like kids, um, they're little plague rats, and I would much rather sit next to sick babies than sick toddlers. Yeah, you the can't... the older they get, it's worse. Yeah. The whole criminal activity thing, you cannot do criminal activity if the only thing you can do is shout. Mm-hmm. It kind of um, throws up that element of surprise thing that you kind of need. Yes, can't be sneaky when you're shouting. Exactly. So, you know, I that's going to have to be an automatic. I'll just take the baby uh, penalty and call it good. Yeah. But also, like, okay, so it says next to two babies with the flu, right? Mm-hmm. So in my brain, then, I mean, they could even be, like, in an aisle across from you. Like, they might not even be, like, right next to you. Mm-hmm. Um, if your baby is sick, why are you taking them on a plane? I mean, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. I mean, I don't really think you should bring a baby Not with on the flu on a plane. Like, a cold, maybe. The flu seems yeah. a little extreme, um, considering that comes with, like, fe- fevers and shit that I think you're supposed to watch in babies, but, you know. Yeah. I mean, but, like, you know, if they have to go on the trip where, like, they're going home or, you know, yeah. there are, I can see reasons to still travel and potentially expose others when you're like, I, I just need, I can't, <laughs> I need to get home. Um, I mean, so I can, I can kind of see that. Having anyone sick on a 12 hour flight is a war crime in my opinion, but you know, yeah. like that's the war crime for, for the person. For that, everyone oh, absolutely. Like I have <laughs> done that before where I've been sick on a 12 hour flight. Um, Cause as you said, children are little plague rats. Um, and mm-hmm. I was traveling internationally at a young age, and that is goddamn fucking miserable. Because um, mm-hmm. then you get to be sick in public. Mm-hmm. No, I, yeah, I, I traveled um, with a cold at one point, and it was just, yeah, it fucking sucked. Because mm-hmm. you're trying to, like, not make, it, like, trying to not get your snot everywhere, and you're like, fuck. Mm-hmm. Just- I just want to go home. Yep. And when it's that long, like, there's no escape, and the people next to you mm-hmm. inevitably get uh, irritated with your sniffling and sneezing and all of that. And it's like, I am so sorry. If I could stop this, I would. Mm-hmm. If I could turn this off. Yeah. I I'm understand. Sure the hell would. You've had to listen to it for 12 hours. I get it. I would be annoyed, too. I am probably annoyed. Um, yeah. But also, yeah, no. the fact that I don't sleep on planes. Yeah. No. <laughs> that's hell but does the plane have to be airborne and are we accompanied by other passengers who may be in danger it just says that you're sitting there I mean so, so it could just be you and two babies that have the flu in which mm-hmm. that would also be hell because then you have to take care of two babies that have the flu mm-hmm. so you know like pick your poison on that one <laughs> but dum tung uh, and that's stream. Uh, <laughs> that's so early too. Uh, cool. All um, right, let's do one more. Okay. I'm trying to pick two good ones because my last poll sucked. <laughs> I've done this one. We've done this one. We've done. We've done so many of these. We've I played this one anything. a couple times. I need, to, I need to find us a new game. Ew. Ew. All right. Well, I guess we're going to go where we're going to end on this note. Um, <laughs> would you rather mm-hmm. have arms for legs or never trim your fingernails ever again? Both of these options suck. <laughs> okay, I, I need to know. Like, if I have arms for legs, does that mean I still have arms for arms as well? So I just have four arms instead of arms I would and legs? So. Yes. We're going to go with that. Because it does. It literally just says those four, wor- four words. Have arms for legs. 
I think I'm going to have to go with that. Mostly Mm -hmm. because when nails get too long, then they, like, they snap and they break and then they crawl Mm -hmm. under and all of that shit. And, uh, nope. Uh, Also, like, you know, when you're laying on the couch and there's something just out of reach and you're like, oh, my God, I wish I had opposable thumbs because I could probably, like, nudge it. it Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, it solves that Mm -hmm. issue. So. Exactly. Now, let me just say, shoes are going to be fucking ugly for until someone <laughs> figures out how to design those, but, you know. I am yeah. into the monkey lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, no, I concur. I think that's the far better option of the two. The only thing that I will point out, like, read back the fingernail one again. Never trim your fingernails again. So does that imply that you were the one trimming your fingernails or that you could go get like a manicure and they could trim your fin- fingernails? Mm. I would say that you could probably have a loophole. That just means that you need to get manicures forever now. Yeah. Which, you know, Which, would get expensive, but, you know. Yeah. In that case, I would rather do that. Yeah. Or even like have a friend or a family member mm-hmm. trim them. Because I'd be more apt to have friends and family, like, help me with my fingernails than my yeah. toenails. So at least it doesn't say toenails. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if that is a loophole that we... Oh, wait, I can pick fingernails and choose to interpret as never needing to trim them because my nails stopped growing. There you go. Back up, Maverick. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I have... um. I tore up a rotisserie chicken for dinner and that's like Maverick's kryptonite. Um, If you know anything about my dog, it's that he is a slut for rotisserie chicken. (laughs) 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 Like would literally do anything for a rotisserie chicken. So that's why he's extra bothering me right now. <laughs> uh, you did buy him crack, so Anna. We did I we we brought crack into the house? <laughs> uh, all yeah. right. Well, on that note, um, <laughs> you want to read the recap? Uh sure. Let me scroll back up so I can see it. Okay. All right. Um, this is what you missed on Glee. Um, I, from the first game, is doing well, but Hajime doesn't care. He has problems studying the realm of the dead. Mom found a black postcard and said Ami's in a mirror. Then something got her in our apartment. Oi arrested us for it and had a deeply, had deadly interrogation. Excuse me, I'm already (laughs) starting strong today. Had a deadly interrogation, so we told her about all the ghosts. Told her all about the ghosts. (laughs) Uh, we learned the story of Miss A witnessing an animal-faced woman slash people with a katana in the Sumi group's moon tower. Bon shut down the tower with our money he gambled. Uh, we searched the offices with Mulan and found info on their peeping photography and dead president. The group all had dirt on each other's affairs and terrible and terrible sense for passwords. Killer Peach has a good nose and only kills men, but we got away uh, and found perfume. All right. Uh, now I need to know. I think we're going up to the presidential suite. Um. Okay. So we got the print. Yes. So we need to go into the elevator. The fingerprint scanning device looks exactly the same as the elevator. Okay. Try pushing the button, but it doesn't react. Okay. Do I have something? Aha. There we go. All right. I take out the fake Isumaru print and press it against the fingerprint scanner. Please Mm -hmm. work. After a moment of silence, a ding announces that the special elevator has arrived. Whoop, whoop. It worked. All right, nicely done. If we use this elevator, we can get to the president's office on the 44th floor. 
Oh, another call I have to take. Go ahead without me. Okay. How are you going to get up there? I don't know. Oya walks away from the elevator. She talks into her cell phone. So then, shall we go? After you, madame. <laughs> I step into the special elevator. Hmm. <laughs> Everything appears normal here. According to the control panel, the elevator stops at the 44th floor and the roof. We don't really need roof access, but it looks like this will finally get us to the 44th floor. Roof, make out sash. We um. should go look at the sky and the stars. <laughs> Not that you can see any stars in Tokyo or wherever we're at. <laughs> with all the lights, but that's okay. I'll say this big of a city, you're not going to be able to see, regardless of where you're at in the world. Um... Too much light pollution. Yeah. Uh, that's the floor with the president's office. <laughs> I'm sure we'll find something interesting. Please don't uh, go off and do your own thing. We're on a date. <laughs> As I finish saying that, the elevator sways violently and... Okay, I didn't ah! like that. Uh-huh. Oh. A strange scream rattles the elevator. It almost sounds like it's coming up from the ground. Okay, time to go. Mm -hmm. Get up, get up, get up. It seems to have stopped. It's probably an earthquake. Hopefully, it has stopped the elevator. Girl, what ele What earthquake has ever screamed at you? <laughs> I've been in a lot of uh, earthquakes in my life. Yeah, same. I don't... Sorry for making you wait. That was a rather large one, hmm? Huh? What are you talking about? That earthquake we just had shook the hell out of the elevator. Earthquake? What are you going on about? I didn't feel anything out in the hall. Judging by her facial expression, she's not messing with me. Wait, so are we under the impression that only the elevator shook? It was the ghost! <laughs> Duh. Um, if that were the case, it'd break it. Damn thing better not be busted after all we, uh, we did to get access to it. Well, we'll know once we try it out. Let's try going to the 44th floor. Throwing caution to the wind, I hit the button, and the <laughs> elevator starts moving smoothly. <laughs> Just fuck it, let's go! <laughs> what? It's moving. The elevator continues on normally. Okay, I have seen uh, horror anime. This is when the cable snaps. Like, it gets to the 44th mm -hmm. floor, and then the cable snaps, and the entire thing just does free f fall and smashes at the bottom. Like, mm -hmm. I think it was another or something that, you know, had that scene, and every time I'm in an elevator now, I think about that. Um... Yeah, no, this is very much some Final Destination shit. I'm mm -hmm. like, mm, mm When we're almost on the 44th floor, the floor display vanishes suddenly. <laughs> At the same moment, I hear some kind of impact from the elevator ceiling. Oh, 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 I love her face. <laughs> what was that noise? <laughs> it sounded like we hit something. Well, in any case, we seem to have arrived. So at what floor, I cannot say. Well, this is the uh, Christmas department from hell. Yeah. What is this place? As soon as we exit the elevator, Rosé asks a question I don't have an answer to. Like, it literally says, Sale, what kind of president's office are they running here? Yeah. Yeah. The 41st floor on Moon Tower. Oh. This can't be it. There ain't no way. But this is... Oi begins quickly searching the area. Well, what do we do? This isn't where we were trying to go. I look over at Oi. Like <laughs> no, wait a sec. I can't put my finger on it, but there's something about this place. You forgot to do your Christmas shopping? 
<laughs> Let's look around a bit before heading back. Okay. Sounds good. Several red tubes are on the floor. Looks like they're flares. All of them are either used already or too wet to be able to work. What are they doing here? Yeah, generally you don't use flares for anything that, you know, but emergencies. <laughs> a TV with a built-in VHS deck. The power light's on, so it should work, but it's not exactly the time to watch videos. Gotta search the area first. But I have a videotape. <laughs> I want to watch the video. A Christmas tree. It's the hottest part of summer right now. But for some reason, there's a Christmas tree. For some reason, there's a puddle on the floor. Going off what's around mm -hmm. it, I'd say there was a fire here. The sprinklers must have gone off. I mean, someone decided to use fucking flares in the middle of the room. So, mm -hmm. that is logical that there was a fire. Um, Hello. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you doing okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. I was even like, okay, something is gonna jump out. Something is gonna get me. I. God damn it. <laughs> I sense a presence in the dark. I quickly point my flashlight at it and. Mm-mm. Not looking. Hi oh. there. I see that strange figure lying in wait for me. Damn it. Again? It sways as it walks toward me. Well. Who are you? What... Are you doing here? What am I doing here? Investigating a serial killing. Okay. Whew. Look away, I'm just your friendly neighborhood high school kid investigating a murder. I investigating now those who bent to Ishimaru's power o wait just a sec Oi suddenly jumps between me and Killer Peach man she is like okay with this somehow o Oi you seem to know something I'm looking for some details oh my god this is how we die. Who are you? I can't just uh, let you do what you want. Girl. Right, you can't. She's a ghost. She, she, yeah, she's a ghost. She's got a katana and fucking three heads right now. I don't think the handcuffs are going to work. Yeah, please kill Oe. She will not be missed. I'm a police officer. I'm in the middle of an invest in investigating... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking we're gonna die here. Killer Peach starts laughing. Police. Ridiculous. Wag your tail for Ishimaru, you useless fraud. Huh? Who are you calling useless? Once again, are you really gonna argue with the ghost with the sword? She is. Uh, that's some white people shit. Oh, you gotta <laughs> get it together. Uh, just tell me what you know already. Hey, what are you doing? Shut up, idiot. I try to stop her, but she brushes me off. Us and Mulan over here are like, have fun. Uh, Killer Peach's breathing becomes more ragged. At this rate, oil... I'm a detective. Don't worry. I've got this under control. I won't let nothing bad... You gonna show her your fucking badge? Like, what the fuck do you think you're gonna do? Ooh. Hat. And... What? Oh, his voice wavers, and then... It sounds like a bucket of water is dumped onto the floor as she collapses. Oh, oh no. Uh, run! <laughs> I sprint to the elevator and mash the button. <laughs> 
she, she was killed. Oh, I was just killed by Killer Peach. My brain is going into overdrive. So many thoughts and images flood my head that I can't focus on anything. Finally, the elevator arrives at the first floor. Not on me. Let's... <laughs> Phrasing. Let's get off. <laughs> We're at the first floor. Right. <laughs> right. We, we have to get off. <laughs> huh? Sorry, I'm a child. <laughs> ah! The elevator shakes again as that weird scream fills my ears. <laughs> chat is a uh, very happy right now if you're not watching chat i am not all. watching chat i've got my <laughs> computer too far away <laughs> oh, the celebration is happening um another earthquake <laughs> that's not natural i will not say anything. i am not going to miss the uh cop tailing us everywhere um <laughs> just as we go to leave the elevator someone comes in from the other side What? Sorry. What? <laughs> Sorry for the wait. Oh. Oh, shit. Time loop. Yeah. What? It's Oi, who I very vividly recall being slashed to pieces. Oi. Chat celebrated too quickly. I can see it. I can just feel the disappointment now. Yeah, um, dang nabbit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, this is... This... Anyway, impossible, you were just... Always puzzled by Rosé's dismay. Here's so, itchy. Uh, huh? What are you talking about? Uh, I stare at her face, but as far as I can tell, the person standing in front of me is definitely Oi. What are you staring at me for? No reason. You're feeling alright? Just tell me what all this is about already. You were stupid as fuck and decided to pick a fight with a ghost, and then we saw you die. Huh. I get what you're trying to say. So, in that weirdo place, I was killed by Killer Peach, and yet I'm right here. Y yeah. This is an episode of the Twilight Zone. That's pretty much it. Well, guess I'll start with the easiest issue. If that really happened, then why am I alive? I wouldn't be so confused right now if I knew the answer to that. I want to know, like, does one of us have a watch? Like, did the time pass or not? Mm-hmm. Mulan was also upset about Oi not dying. <laughs> um, it's no use. It's incomprehensible. Let's try mentally retracing our steps. Where should we start from? When we rose th rode the special elevator. That's a good starting point, right? We used the fake fingerprint and got in the elevator, but Oi got a call and came later. Then we tried to go to the 44th floor, but arrived at a mystery floor instead. No, you're leaving out the earthquake. When we got onto the elevator, it shook violently. An earthquake when you got on the elevator? Looking at Oi jogs my memory. Now that I think about it, only Oi didn't feel the earthquake. Also, when we got back. When we got to the first floor after escaping, we felt another earthquake. And that's when Oe showed up once again. Almost like some kind of deja vu. Wait a sec. If we really are repeating everything, what's gonna happen? What do you mean by that? That earthquake. If the earthquake is the marker, and we've returned to that point... 
Uh, uh, hold up. Let me see if I'm following you. We went back in time. Is that your theory? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it makes sense. We've returned to a time when Oi is still alive. Or, like, to the point right before we went up on the special elevator. A confused silence passes between us. I don't really understand the theory, but... Why don't we just try everything over again? Try it again, you say? Yeah, let's take the special elevator to the 44th floor. I still haven't gotten there yet. Well, she is right about that. If we really have gone back in time, Oya hasn't ridden the elevator yet. I'm fine with going again, but just try and stay calm, all right? Huh? What's that supposed to mean? That's what got you killed. All right, back in the elevator, I guess. Okay, I don't have to do that again then. <sighs> we get on the elevator again. Okay, so getting back to our conversation. Oi redirects the conversation. Did Killer Peach say anything about Ishimaru? Yeah, you kept badgering Killer Peach about him and then you got cut to shreds. Hmm. Let's see. Might be tied to the rumors about Ishimaru when Moon Tower was being built. Now that you mention it, I do remember that. Some diet woman was popping up on the news. That diet woman, Okai Okayama? Okayama. Okay. Okayama? Or no. Yeah, Okayama. Okayama. Um, she hounded the national diet too, but in the end she said she didn't have enough proof and nothing got settled. I wonder if that's the case Killer Peach is talking about. <laughs> At this point the details have all faded from public memory. What? Why don't we just go ask this Okayama lady about it? Well, that'd be a pretty neat trick, because uh, Okayama has gone missing. Some say she ran away or committed suicide, but they never found a body. Seriously? Wait, speaking of which, Killer Peach is... Just then, it sounds like something hits the elevator ceiling. Uh-oh. What was that noise? Who knows? Maybe something hitting the elevator? <laughs> By the way, we heard a similar sound the last time we rode this. Everyone stares at the ceiling. Can we open it up? Yeah, there's an emergency hatch. Uh, you can open that up. I can't open the hatch on my own. Rosé, help me out here. You're not asking me to lift you up, are you? Or I can lift you, however you want to do it. I'm kidding. Nah, I can't stand on top of a lady. You can climb up on me. <laughs> We're just uh, using this to cop a feel. It's fine. Um... <laughs> As you wish, then. Hang on tight. We work together to get the hatch open. Can you get it? We're a little busy. <laughs> uh, yes, no problems here. The hatch swings open and... Whoa! The object that hit the roof clatters down into the elevator. Oh. 
a katana. Uh, what the heck is it? something like that? That noise must have been caused by this katana hitting the elevator. And... Rosé picks up a small electronic device lying next to the katana. This is a voice recorder. Rosé presses the button on it. This is... Uh, this is Okayama. I'm leaving behind this recording just in case. A woman's voice starts speaking firmly. Okayama? Th that's the diet woman you were just... Shut up. I can't hear what she's saying. Today, I've come to directly question President Ishimaru of the Sumi Group. I am a diet woman, but this is Ishimaru, so anything could happen. What is diet woman? Oh, okay. So, um, the Japanese, like, um, mm, Congress, almost, um, is called mm -hmm. the National Diet. Oh, okay. That, okay. Thank you. So, that yeah. That makes... <laughs> I understand now. <laughs> It's like, okay. <laughs> I do not know where we got that word in English, because it's not what we call it, the geek guy, um, in Japanese. So, I don't know, like, some other country must use that, and we just picked it up. Um, but yeah, no, they're talking about the, um, it's like a national, um, like, a, like she's a like politician. A yeah, yeah, exactly. Like a congresswoman or something. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes so much more sense. <laughs> I I thought about that the first time you said it, and I went, hmm, I wonder if she knows what that is. Uh, <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm glad I asked, because I was just like, hey, this is whatever. Um, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot more sense. Um, if I happen to suddenly go missing, the culprit is Noboru Ishi Ishimaru. I'll reveal the truth behind the Momori department stone fire store fire uh and the sale of that property oh for that child's sake no the sake of all those lost that day i won't let this die if the police and the judiciary refuse to act then i'll take matters into my own hands damn that's where the recording ends It's quite a surprise hearing Okayama's voice. If she labeled Ishimaru as the culprit, Sumi would have Sumi would have had a hard time if this were made public. Yeah, right. Oi's reply seems oddly distracted. Huh? Something bothering you? Now I'm just wondering what that picture is. It's a kid's doodle. Is she did the kid. one with the headband is Momotaro? I pick up the picture and find something written in crayon with shaky handwriting. Mom is cool like Momotaro. Don't let the bad people beat you. Probably a drawing for Mother's Day. Aw, oh, that's a shame. It's got blood on it. Not a me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I take a deep breath, then touch the dark black blood stain on the picture. Touch the blood. Once again, remind me to go get a tetanus shot later. <laughs> I think she'd this far. All stupid sons. I can hear men whispering. Finally, the image starts to come together in my mind. After done with, these are President Ishimaru's orders to dispose of this woman immediately. The place stirs. It seems like there are three or four men here. General Manager, are you sure she's... The dignified voice cuts him off and repeats the orders. Cut her head off. That's her punishment for running wild with the president's beloved katana. Once you're done, throw her in the trunk and take her to the, a treatment plant tomorrow. Yes, sir, Bando. Takada. You, uh, 
You heard him. Cut, a, cut her head off. Well, now we know what the 5-5 five five committee was. But, but she's still alive. I hear a quiet noise like someone coughing up blood. She'll be dead soon anyway, your order to behead her. Pity, what a waste of a good woman. <laughs> Yuck. <gasps> What'd you see? You already know. Those Sumi guys? They killed Okoyama. Figured so. Let me guess. The killers are the 5-5 five five club guys? Yeah, I think so. I heard some of their names. Apparently, President Isimaru gave the orders. They cut off her head, and her body's probably... What'd they do? I don't know. They said something about putting it in a trunk and taking it somewhere. Hmm. Well... I think we know why Killer Peach is after Sumi employees now. Let's go to the 44th floor. You're still going? Never back off. <laughs> um, you've got a painfully detailed explanation why the victims were attacked. And you've also got Okoyama's voice recorder. You know everything that you couldn't dig up during the police investigation. No, I need more. I gotta go to that weird floor you guys were talking about. Oh, by the way. I'll be confiscating that recorder and katana you found in this evidence. And that's fine. What are we gonna do with it? <laughs> I don't know. Let's go to the 44th floor. Yeah. I wanted the katana for my bedroom. Alright. Well, this is the place, huh? Oya starts looking around the area. Yeah, if you die, it's not our fault. Mm -hmm. So, Killer Peach appeared just ahead? Yeah, right up there. Like I was saying, this time. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Are you trying to read for me, buddy? Mm <laughs> hmm. Uh, let's get going already. Sacre bleu. Not <laughs> I mean. I don't even know that one. Cause it's <laughs> <beast>. uh, <laughs> the history might repeat itself again. Which is why I said it like that. <laughs> anyway. There she is. Okay, yep. We are maxed out. The screams from the mouths pierce my brain. The tale has reached happily ever after. Put them to the sword, put them to the sword, put to the sword, put them, put them to the sword. Kill, 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 kill. You gotta remember to put the uh the body mouths um on your list of characters. Yeah, that's true. And our next uh I do do those. Our next run in with Killer Peach. This might be our last chance. Alright. So, 818, Killer Peach, Rumor Notes 5. The words of Diet Woman Tomoko Okayama, voice on the recorder. If missing, the culprit is Noboru Ushimaru. After the department store fire and selling of the site, kids drawing, mom is cool like Momotaro. A mom, Tomoko like Momotaro in the eyes of her child, guys in vision, killed Okayama, Ishimaru's orders. All right. Where to? Forward. All right. Go forward? I sense a presence in the dark. I quickly shine my flashlight toward it and... Yep, there's the head. Hey, Okayama. I see Killer Peach lying in wait for me. I thought so. Killer Peach sways as she walks toward me. Who are you? 
what are you doing here? Hmm. She's asking the same thing again. Time must have reset for her too. If I give her a different answer, then maybe the future will be changed. All right. What should I say? Here. We're investigating Okayama's case. Killer Peach stares at me, waiting. What exactly are you, you inquiring about? Killer Peach's eyes don't seem hostile for once. The truth she wanted to make known is... Is it the department store? Oh. Your killers. Alright. I listened to the voice recorder you left behind. I know what the Isi what Isimaru and the Five Five Club did to you. I see. And you know my rage. You know why I killed them. Yeah, and let me just say, girl, I still believe Gaslight Gate keep girl boss. They deserve to die. So oh you did nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah. Wait, Okayama. Bitch. I know how you feel, too. But could you leave the rest to the police? Why are you asking her this shit? If we exercise oh, her, then she's gonna have to leave the rest of the police. Shut the fuck up. Oya spreads her arms out to show she's not hostile and slowly walks towards Killer Peach. Oh, please, please. Oh, yeah, Those useless. Yeah, see, she did absolutely nothing wrong ever in her life. Stop, Okayama, you're dead. You can't do anything if you're dead. Let us take up your cause and. I mean, she did kill like five people, so. Oi desperately tries to re reason with Killer Peach, but she wavers oh. and then. We hear something that sounds like a bucket overflowing as she falls to the ground. Oh my god. Dumb bitch. <laughs> I can't do anything. Foolish prattle. I killed them. I punished them. There is only one left. Don't know where he's hiding, but I will kill him. We can go get you an address, like... I'll help. <sighs> Oi! You... I I'll kill you, too. <laughs> because some things have been changed, this time Killer Peach focuses her rage on me. Damn, this is the worst possible scenario. If we can reach the elevator, we might be able to escape the situation, but... But she's too fast to get away from. We'll have to stop her somehow. Prepare yourselves. Alright, survival escape! Scene one. Alright. So, puddle of water. We need to use pinky bath. Uh, okay. Puddle of water. A puddle of water. If anything needs water, they can get it here. Okay. Do, 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 do. The first time I bumped into Killer Peach, she was completely focused on smells. If she's sensitive to smells. I grab the pinky bath from my backpack and chuck it into the puddle. The pinky bath quickly melts, filling the area with a peachy fragrance. Ah! What did you do? My nose. Where are you? Killer Peach covers her nose from the assaults on her sense of smell and loses us. Uh, magnifique. Uh, let's escape while we can still can. Yeah, Fabric, let's, sit down. let's book it out of here. Get the elevator! 
Leave it to me. But the elevator doors don't open. What are you Work doing? Up. I'm hitting the button, but the elevator's not coming. Just imagine Hajime doing the got your nose trick with his thumb on, <laughs> with his thumb on Killer Peach. <laughs> Where are you? Killer Peach's angry yell and the sound of something breaking echo throughout the room. The sound starts drawing closer. I won't respond. It sounds like Killer Peach is almost upon us. If we wait here, it's just a matter of time before she catches us. If we can't run, then we just gotta stand and fight. It seems like it seems that that is our only chance. Um, but how should we engage her? She'll cut us down before we can do anything. This is probably a dumb idea, but I'll act as a decoy. While Rosé is still shocked at my suggestion, I grab the dirty dress shirt. I'll draw her attention with this, then you figure a way to defeat her. I throw my bag at Rosé. <laughs> what a boneheaded plan. Hey, my life is at stake here, so do your part. We can have hot, rough makeup sex later. I found you. She's taking the bait. Rustin's in your hands. Hey! The smell of the guy you hate! Over here! Alright, survival escape. Oh, last scene already. Rip us. How do I quell Killer Peach's grudge? I don't know, girl, that's your job. Okay, what do I do? TV. Put on the video? Oh. Mm -hmm. It's a television with a VHS player. It seems to have power, but... And uh, the memorial video? Yes. Never... No. <sighs> I drop to a knee and roll along the floor, barely dodging the blade swinging above my head. I had just enough distance to avoid that without getting harmed, but at this range, I won't be able to dodge again. Damn it, hurry it up! Now accept your punishment. Just then. Listen to this. A machine clicks on behind Killer Peach. And now, some breaking news. The president of the Sumi group, who had been hospitalized. You wanted to kill Ishimaru, but... Reports are coming in. Sometime early this morning, Mr. Noboru Ishimaru passed away. Maverick, it is hot outside. Stop opening the door. He's already dead. Ridiculous. He's dead? Yep. He died half a year ago, apparently. So, no matter how much you want to get your revenge, you can't do it in this world. I see. Then... She's just gonna disappear? <laughs> okay, I was joking, but, uh... Bye! Oops. Peace out! She mutters weakly. Then, Killer Peach fades into the darkness. I wasn't trying to take a screenshot, but we can't take one now in case anyone wanted to know. <laughs> but we survived! Woo! And... Yay! No more mouths. Well, just the one mouth that we're supposed to have now. The curse is gone. Oh, that was close. Seems we both narrowly escaped death. She certainly took your advice, but she still died. I imagine she'll be alive again once we make our way back down, though. Let's go back. Get back. No, not yet. I look at the pool of blood left behind where Killer Peach disappeared. Kakuya is getting bored of Ami. If I don't figure out anything here, Kakuya might... The worst case scenario flashes through my mind. I swallow hard as a reflex. But I have to see it with my own eyes. Please. 
I approach the pool of blood and press my fingers against it. Oh, she's still there. I'm used to seeing Ami like this now. She's still trapped in the realm of the dead inside the mirror. Hmm. The floor and walls are pale, but it's possible this is the bathroom of my apartment? She's been in here the entire fucking time. Big brother, please save me. Ami whispers in a faint, barely audible voice. Kakuya said to leave this place. You have to open a path from the outside. A path? Make a path, big brother. Hurry, please. Before Kukuya gets back. Ami? Did you see something? A path. If I can make a path to the realm of the dead, I can save Ami. I tell Rosé what I heard from Mommy. Make a path, hmm? As knowledgeable as I am, that clue is still too cryptic for me to comprehend. Our aunt probably knew. Yeah, yeah true. true. Oh, sorry. What's this? I got excited. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed a document left behind in the pool of Killer Peach's blood. It's been yeah. mostly blackened out with magic marker, but I can make out the title, which reads, Report on the Cause of the Fire. Another suspicious document. Why did Killer Peach have that? Is it related to this place somehow? A department store that has signs of a fire. What is this place? And why were we led here? The answer might be in this document. We best give this to Oe. Her beloved power of God is probably the best tool to solve this mystery. I collect the bloodstained report and head off to the elevator with Rosé. We get in, hit the button for the first floor, and the elevator quietly starts moving. Shame we never made it to the 44th floor. I was quite interested in seeing the lofty view from the president's office. It would have been quite romantic. <laughs> it's a pity, really. We took care of Killer Peach. That should be enough. I know. I just wanted to say it. Now, which bar should we visit on our way back so I can give you a victory drink? Anywhere other than the Black Rabbit is fine. If we're all drinking at the rate you do, the bar will end up bankrupt. Haha. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I enjoy drinking there because she has a good selection. Never get tired of it. Huh? The elevator lights turn off. I thought Rosé disappeared all of a sudden, so... Then the elevator starts shaking violently. I think I can oh, hear no. an odd noise, too. But we're in the dark and everything's so disorienting that I can't be sure. Rosé, are you okay? Hey, Rosé! Yes. What the fuck? <sighs> Rosé gets up after having sunk to the floor. What are you doing? <laughs> my apologies. That uh, sudden shaking took my legs out from underneath me. I must have let down my guard. She was over here, like, slouching against the side of the elevator trying to uh, attract us, and we're just like, what are you doing? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Finally, the elevator arrives at the first floor. God damn it. <sighs> hey, you're back! Like a fucking cockroach. <laughs> as soon as the door opens, I see Oya's cheerful face again. I figured she'd be alive, but it's still a relief to actually see her. Is it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, how'd it go? Did time get reset again? Yeah, pretty much. Mulan, paint me like one of your French ghosts. <laughs> Nanami took care of Killer Peach. But unfortunately, you were killed again. You need to be better at keeping your composure. 
I don't know what I did, and it wasn't technically me that did it, so you can't really be mad at me. I don't no. think that's how that works, but I almost died because of you, thanks. <laughs> anyway, tell me what happened. I give Oya a recap. Huh. And that's uh, what you said about the... And what's that you said about the report on the cause of the fire? Oh, this. I take the report out of my bag and hand it off to Oi. Wow, someone did a number on this. It's quite similar to the blackened textbooks after the war. What war? Oops. Um. <laughs> <laughs> But you police have always or have ways to deal with this kind of situation, yes? Hmm. Well, I'll take it for now. If I use some of my connections, I can maybe do something. Oi takes the fire report. So, Killer Peach had this, huh? So she was connected to that fire. The fire at Momoya Department Store? What? Where'd you hear about that? Uh, remember? Okayama's recorder mentioned it. Oh, wait. We went back in time, so you haven't heard it yet. Nanami, where's that recorder right now? Well, you had the bright idea to confiscate it as evidence. And then Killer Peach killed you. So it doesn't exist anymore? Basically. Hey, don't go giving me that look. You're the one who took it. Because I can really only be mad at myself. Should we check the eh, top of the Apparently elevator? we're good. Uh, <laughs> well, whatever. We've decided it's too much uh, effort to look. No one wants to. Learning that there's a connection between Killer Peach and that fire is enough. Is it? If my theory is right, this report is probably... Sounds like Oya has a hunch. Well, let's just wait until it's been analyzed. It's about late, so we better slip, uh, split up here. Put, um, plus, your curse is lifted, right? After meeting up with Bon in the security room, we leave Moon Tower. As we head to Shinza Station, I tell Bon about what happened in the tower tonight. Killer Peach, who is Okayama, and her connection to the fire, the elevator that rewound time. There's still so much that I don't understand. If Oi can figure out what's in that document, maybe it'll all become clear. Let's split up here tonight. Thank you for the help. Um, understand, upstanding citizens. Man, for you to say that after all the laws you just had us break, you must not give a damn. You're all right in my book, Oi. Well, neither of you are all right in mine, so that matches up. <laughs> oh, shut it. Now, get on back home. Get on, get. <laughs> um, well, should we get back and get some sleep? Am I gonna get my $300 back? Yeah, give me my money, damn it. <laughs> I am flat broke after all. I need to go to work and earn a paycheck tomorrow. That's the first time I've ever heard you sound like a responsible grown up. Shut up, kid. I'm always responsible. While we're on the subject, not on me. Lend me 10,000 yen so I can work properly. Freaking no! Bleach. One! One. Glad we're in alignment. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, don't get so mad. Why do you think he has all this money? I'm a fucking high schooler, man. Maybe a college student. <laughs> like, you got into Moon Tower tonight, thanks to me. Yeah, and I gave you money for that. I mean, granted, we do off. fight, like, or we used to fight in an underground fighting ring. So, you know, we are probably flush with cash, but... Not if uh, we were having to fund Bond's uh, lifestyle. Yeah, get out of here, dude. 
Um, I don't think you could possibly repay what I did for you. I don't have the energy to argue, so I just hand, hand Bon 10,000 yen. No! Here, have 100 have bucks. This... Shut up. Why does he have all this money on him? I mean, Japan is still a cash society, so... I guess. Haha, uh, uh -huh, thank you. I'll pay you back twice. No, ten times as much. Believe you me, I don't believe you. Yeah. What a scumbag. You're the cop. Nanami, want me to slug him? I mean, yes. Hey, police shouldn't encourage violence. But also, yes, like, shut up, Nanami. <laughs> well then, I think I'll exit this uh, stage here. Uh, can we get that drink you mentioned? Come on, you get home too. Miners shouldn't be wandering the streets at this hour. Hold up. The police are preserving the crime scene, right? It'd be bad if I went back home. So, I can stay with Rosé. <laughs> nah, it should be okay now. They said they'd leave by today. If any are still there, just call me. Yeah, I'll do that. Oops. I know you're prob probably worried about something. That's I'm sure me. it'll turn out okay. See ya. Call me when you find out about that report. Hey, Rosé. I can give you a ride on my motorcycle. We say you might come over to my house. <laughs> See my haunted bathroom. <laughs> my haunted bachelor my pad. <laughs> uh, I get on my motorcycle and drive straight back to my apartment. My body is exhausted, but I still have things that I need to do tonight. All right. We have our Killer Peach file updated. Killer Peach, rumor note six. Elevator that travels back in time. Beat Killer Peach. Most likely, Okayama became a spirit. Ami's still okay. Can be saved by creating a path from outside. Make a path on my apartment bathroom mirror? How? Uh, fire report completely blacked out. Connected to the fire at Momoi department store. All right. And another update. All right. Uh, summary regarding Tomoko Okayama. Killer Peach was Okayama who fought in society's darkness. She had three heads, Momotaro's followers, a dog, a monkey, and a pheasant. Looked like the cool Momotaro her child drew. Was after evidence against corrupt President Isimaru. She also investigated why he covered up the fire incident. While on the case, she was brutally murdered, body abandoned. She deserved so much better, man. Mm -hmm. Hey, Seiji. Are you going to be at my house? You can pick locks, right? <sighs> Ami. Ami said I needed to create a path from outside. But what did she mean by path? I've no idea what it, when it comes to the spiritual stuff, but Ami asked me to do it. That means it's got to be something I can do. That's right. Aunt Natsumi said... Before she collapsed, she said that she was going to save Ami. She sounded confident. She must have known how to save her. Wasn't she about to say something? I recall her last words. Ami... Ami is inside the mirror. Oh, Leia. Oh, Leia. Um, I'm going to save Ami. So hurry up and join. <laughs> uh. ah! Hurry and join, huh? She never finished that sentence. What was she trying to say? Do I need to do anything in here? Here. Don't really feel like taking a shower right now. Examine mirror. I'm more than familiar with this mirror. There's a few water stains on it. Haven't bothered to clean it for a while. To save Ami, we have to make a path leading to the realm of the dead. Aunt Natsumi had said hurry and join. Are there any hints anywhere? I'm more than familiar with this mirror. Um... It says use compact mirror. Maybe hurry and join didn't mean to hurry and join her there. But hurry and join the mirrors? I've heard when you, when you hold mirrors up to one another to reflect each other, it's called a spirit road. 
I'm sure Natsumi had heard of that before since she's a horror writer. I've no interest in supernatural stuff, so I'd completely forgotten about it until now. Should I give it a shot? Well, supernatural stuff has interest in you. Yeah. I take the compact mirror out of my bag and hold it up to the mirror. Okay. Huh? That instant, a thin, pale arm stretches out of the mirror, as if breaking a watery surface. Ami? I immediately grab the small, quivering hand. I can feel her body heat through my glove. Hold on, I'll save you! I brace against the sink with my right hand and pull with all my might with my left. <coughs> Damn it! You're heavy! Ami's arm doesn't budge easily. It's like a weed firmly rooted in the ground. Do I need a bigger mirror? Her arm slowly gets absorbed back into the mirror. If I stop pulling for a second, I'll get dragged in with her. Damn it! I finally got you! I'm not letting you go! I fill my lungs with air and pull with all my weight. Ah! Oh, I could have let him do it. I catch Ami as she tumbles out of the mirror and I fall on my back. Big brother. When Ami looks up at me, she gives me that warm smile that she's always had. Then she slowly closes her eyes, relief clear on her face. Her breathing and pulse are calm. Looks like she's fainted, though. I'm seriously beat. Okay, we should probably get her to a hospital and, like, food and mm -hmm. a lot of shit. Um, I consider letting Ami sleep on the bed while I collapse on the floor, but I really don't feel like spending the night here. Since this, there's a mirror connecting to the realm of the dead, where Kakuya is, anything could happen. I hoist Ami onto my back while she sleeps and head to the Black Rabbit. That place should still be safe, though. I am being targeted by spirits, so not very much. A cool, refreshing breeze blows, a rarity on warm summer nights like these. My mind and body are exhausted, but the sensation still feels strangely bad. <sighs> Feeling Ami's warmth on my back makes it all finally seem real. Why are we not seeing her? I'm very worried about that. Yeah, that's weird. I came close to dying so many times, and there have been a lot of victims, but I finally rescued Ami. But it's not over yet. As long as Kakuya exists, her game will continue, and I'll be plagued by this curse of death. Ami could just get caught up in it again. Aunt Natsume's still in a coma, too. Apparently, fuck everyone else that's in a coma right now. Um, there's really only one way to end this. I've put an end to Kakuya with my own hands. When we get back to Black Rabbit, I carry Ami inside and lay her on Natsumi's daybed. Then I collapse at a random seat in the bar. Kakuya could come to get Ami back. As long as that possibility exists, I have to sleep with one eye open. Alright. We beat Game of Death. <laughs> and possibly gotten Ami back. I don't know that I trust this though, man. <laughs> There's something weird here. Mm hmm. Yeah, this would have been too much for us to try to finish the other night. Oh, absolutely. Night. All right, eight nineteen Thursday. I need to go put my bowl in the kitchen so the dogs stop hounding me. So I'll be right back. Okay. <sighs> Lay on for what must be the hundredth time I give my neck and shoulders a good rub. They ache with heavy dullness. I like to think that I can take on more than your average Joe, but apparently even I'm worn out. Is Ami still asleep? It's already noon, but it looks like Ami hasn't moved since I brought her here. I'm sure she's just really tired, but if this is more than just sleep, I'll, then I'll have to call a doctor. Well, you should probably call a doctor anyways. Like, I don't... Girl has been missing for like two weeks. I got a text. Earlier I sent out messages saying that Ami is safe. It's probably someone re replying to that. Amanome doesn't hide his happiness, aww. He also doesn't hide his shock when I tell him about what happened to Natsumi. Apparently, Amanome is still under house arrest. There's no reply from Hazuki. She probably hasn't recovered yet. Bon just says, that's great. Which is pretty much what I'd expected he'd say. 
All right, what I miss? Um, basically, we woke up. Ami is still unconscious, um, and we're we are sitting there going, hmm, maybe we should get a doctor to look at her. Um, and mm. we sent out messages to everyone telling them Ami is safe. Uh, Amanome is super happy for us, and also still under house arrest. Hazuki obviously didn't respond because um, she's in her own coma. Uh, Bond mm-hmm. just said that's great. And okay. Rosé is very interested in how I was able to save Ami from the mirror. I guess that's the sort of thing that would make a supernatural specialist like her interested. Oi is extremely worried about Ami's condition. She says she's got time this evening, so she'll swing by the Black Rabbit. I don't think that she's a good influence. I think maybe she should not come. Um, <laughs> I sent a text to Natsumi, who's still unconscious in the hospital, so naturally there's no reply. She was the one who was most desperate to get Ami back, so it sucks that she can't hear the news. Hey, kiddo. Big brother. Ami, are you feeling okay? Yeah. Did you save me? Yeah, kinda. Relax. You're safe now. Big bro. Ami starts crying. Oh, honey. Then she launches herself into my arms and breaks into sobbing. Thanks. Oh, brother! She stands there for a while, crying. Yeah, she's gonna have a little trauma from this. It's fine. Just a little. Alright, price of the game. Don't like the sound of that, but, uh... Mm -mm. Look, trauma is the spice of life or something. (laughs) You okay now, Ami? Yeah. She wipes away her tears and grins. If she can smile, then she's probably alright. Hey, Ami, can you tell me what happened? If it's too hard for you, it can wait, but... No, it's fine. I can talk about it. Yeah? Okay, then. What do you want to know about? Alright, when you disappeared, the realm of the dead or Kakuya? When you disappeared. What happened the night you disappeared? You mean, what happened when we got to your place after we almost got run over by that van? Yeah. I heard a scream and rushed to the bathroom, but no one was there. Kakuya suddenly appeared in the mirror. I was shocked, and then she just dragged me in. Why'd Kakuya abduct you? She said it was because I lost her game. Because I didn't give an offering to Yuri. The bloodometry scene of Ami's headphones I saw before. Yuri Takamura's voice asked Ami to offer her flowers. That was probably Kakuya's doing. Do you want to know about something else? Realm of the Dead? I assume I have to get through all these. Yes. Okay. You were in the Realm of the Dead the whole time, yeah? What exactly is that place like? Um, how should I put it? Ami tilted her head and thought, My head felt kind of fuzzy. Like, I couldn't ever really tell if I was awake or just dreaming. And I never got hungry, even though I never ate anything while I was there. That's not a lot of information. Sorry, big brother. I don't really understand it either. Do you want to know about something else? Kakuya. Was Kakuya always with you? No, not always. Just sometimes. She'd talk with me and play with me. What did she talk about? Um, I think she only ever talked about you. She asked me a bunch of questions, like about your past, hobbies, favorite games. I guess she was interested in me because I survived her games? Oh, yeah, Ami. Did Kakuya say anything about that NG thing? Maverick. No, she never said anything about it. I was curious too, so I asked her, but she didn't tell me. Huh. Did she say anything else that caught your attention? Um, Hold on. Be right back. Okay. Actually, do you know anything about hey, the demon feel me? No, I've never heard of it before. What is it? I don't know. I just remember Kakuya talking about it. The demon Tsukuyomi. That has an ominous ring to it. Is that another spirit? Do you want to know about something else? 
No, that's everything I needed to know. Based on her responses, Ami seems to be her normal self. I was worried she might have some effects from being in the realm of the dead, but I guess not. If that's the case, she can probably handle the news about Aunt Natsumi. I'll have to tell her at some point anyway. Better do it sooner rather than later. Hey, Ami? I gotta tell you something about Aunt Natsumi. Huh? What about, Mom? Just sit, stay calm for this, alright? She's in the hospital right now. Uh, Kakuya got her somehow while she was trying to save you. Yeah, I know. What? Seriously? Yeah, Kakuya told me. Probably just to scare me. She looks like she's about to cry, but she's doing a good job of holding it in. She probably doesn't want to worry me. If I were all alone, I probably would have cried. But I have you, so I'm okay. Ami. I am a bad substitute for a parent. <gasps> Boyfriend! Boyfriend. See you. Close enough, right? Um, I guess I'll take on Amanomi for a bit. How are things Maverick. going? Hi. Whoa there. Looks like I put the brakes on your sibling reunion. Want me to come back later? Uh, Amanome, what are you doing here? Well, you Maverick. know, Hi. I heard you saved Aunt Ami, so I couldn't just sit around. I'm glad you're safe, Ami. Yeah, thanks. You helped my brother out, right, Sandy? Maverick, come on. Yeah, because your brother is a hopeless idiot sometimes. If I didn't rein him in every once in a while, he'd probably run straight off a cliff. You haven't changed a bit. Want me to sock you? Calm down, jeez. I struggled to break out just for you? You could show me a little appreciation. Hey, what do you mean you broke out? Pops got mad at me after what happened to Maruhasi, and he put me on house arrest. Come on, let's go! But he Garrett, and second-hand man stepped out today, so there was a hole in the security detail. I threatened the guy in charge with watching me and finally managed to get away. You're gonna be in hot water later. Yeah, probably. But I couldn't just do nothing. I gotta get back at those spirits that thought they could get the best of me. I swear on the crest of the Amanome family, I'm gonna knock them straight to hell. Amanome? Ami's back safe and sound. There's still major problems that we need to deal with, but I want to celebrate Ami's return for at least one day. <sighs> I let out a big yawn, unsure of what to do now that I actually had time to myself for a change. You sound bored, Hatsume. Wanna go grab something sweet to eat? Nah, I can't. Always gonna be here soon, apparently. Always that cop lady, yeah? What does she want? I glance at the door to the kitchen. Ami is napping in there right now. She seemed fairly energetic, but I'm sure she's exhausted. So, I guess we just wait around till then? Wanna kill some time? Yeah. I don't know what we are doing in this breakaway. Our boyfriend's back. Our boyfriend is back. So what did you miss? Um, so much. Ami's awake. Um... <laughs> Uh, Kakuya mentioned the demon Tsukuyomi, which we don't know anything about, so, um, okay. then Amanome came in, basically he broke out from house arrest, um, to come see us. Romantic. So, um, Ami is currently napping, and Amanome just asked if we wanted to waste some time, so. Hell yeah. We're gonna fuck our boyfriend. Um, I don't know what <laughs> we're doing, um. All right, Maverick got outside and just proceeded to run around like a crazy man. Yeah, that sounds bad. And right. wouldn't leave, do anything I said. All right, so have we had the chance to examine the bookshelves? We have all? not yet. This is cool, the first time I've had. Uh, cool. Uh, there's a writing desk and bookshelves. Not normal to see these in a bar. Aunt Natsumi is a horror writer, horror author, and this is where she writes when she's here in the bar. Oh. Hajime, uh, what's that book? Has it got some fancy Japanese-style binding? It's got some. Uh -huh. 
Was that book there before? On top of the desk is an old-fashioned book bound with string. The book's slightly faded color is scar. The book's slightly faded cover is scarlet, save for a white rectangle with the author and title. Nagoshi no Gi by Yakumo Miroku. Why is Yakumo Miroku's books here? Miroku is that children's author you were talking about, right? The psycho who killed young girls? Yeah. The maniac who kidnapped girls and then turned them into dolls and left them in his mansion. It was Yakumo Miroku. And that title, Nagoshi no Gi, I feel like I've heard that somewhere before. That's right. It was Aunt Natsumi. She said it on the phone before she collapsed. I went home and looked through Miroku's old works, and it's part of the Nagoshi no Gi, The Realm of the Dead. The reason Miroku victimized those girls, his relationship with Kakuya, if I read this, I might be able to find out. Nagoshi no Gi is a short story featuring a certain man as the protagonist. Of course it's a man, it's always a man. Um, for generations, the man's family performed a rite called the Nagoshi no Gi. The rite was meant to seal a doll-shaped spirit by the name of Kaguya. Kaguya played with humans using various games and stole their lives and consciousness. But the man's ancestor, who was a spirit medium, caught Kaguya and sealed her in a certain place. He sealed her inside a mirror in a world known as the Realm of the Dead. The Nagoshi no Gi is a ceremonial rite used to keep Kaguya sealed inside the mirror. When a special doll is filled with spiritual power is given to Kaguya, Kaguya as a playmate, Kaguya becomes satisfied for about 10 years until the doll loses its power. Every 10 years, the doll must be recharged with energy and offered back to Kaguya. Are we supposed to now kind of empathize with the, the child murderer? No, I think I'm still not into that, but, um... That was the duty given to the man's family who descended from that spirit medium. After his father's death, the man was also going to inherit that right, as was his family's custom. Like, I don't think, uh, piecing together girls, um, did, had anything to do with Real. sealing Kaguya, so. Um, as long as the rite continued peacefully, Kaguya would never appear in the real world again. Or at least that's how it should have been. Someone failed their duty. But the man lost his spiritual powers in an accident before he had any successors. And because of that, the Nagoshi no Gi was unable to be performed. If Kaguya's seal was released, there would be many victims. The man was bound by his duty and devised an alternate method. He took drastic steps to find something to replace his lost powers. The Nagoshi no Gi he devised was to take living girls, make them into dolls, and offer them to Kaguya in the Realm of the Dead. Okay, now I see where the correlation comes in. Mm -hmm. The pain, regrets, and grudges held by the girls would be a substitute for his spiritual powers. Just as the man hoped, Kaguya was delighted and remained in the mirror. The man had turned the Nagoshi no Gi into a blood-soaked ritual. Nevertheless, the man continued to fulfill his duty. For that was the fate of all those born into that household. Well, now we know why the family didn't have anything, any issues with it. Mm-hmm. Well, I had to pause after that part. I think about the bizarre ritual described in the book. If this isn't just fiction, but was based on reality instead, then were Miroku's murders, were they done to steal Kakuya? Once every 10 years, Miroku killed a girl and made her into a doll in order to maintain the seal. But then Miroku died, and now Kakuya's free. I don't know exactly what happened, but the seal must have failed. I keep reading and find details on the right and the realm of the dead. One part of it says, if Kakuya opens a path to the realm of the dead in a, in a mirror, in can be opened by joining mirrors. Aunt Natsumi must have read this. I read all the way to the end, but nothing else sounds particularly helpful. It doesn't even say what NG is. Damn, what a waste. I slam the book shut and shove it back into the bookshelf. Yeah, I feel you. That book was creepy, man. Wanna make out? 
get the shivers in a different way. Damn it! Uh, sorry I'm late. I'm expecting big things from you today. Huh? Uh-oh. You're Amanome, yeah? Huh. So you're all a... First time we've actually met. I've heard tons of rumors about you. I'm sure none of them were good. I don't plan on making friends with the pampered prince from the Amanome family. Imagine having beef with a fucking 19 year old as a grown ass mm. adult. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I worked for the police, not your pal. Hey now, no need to be so angry. Not even an official member yet. Anyway, I'm just an insignificant high schooler. That's rich coming from Mr. Threats himself. But whatever, we'll put that on pause. I'm not after you right now. Nanami, we have customers? Ami steps out from where she was sleeping. Seems the noise woke her up. She looks up at Oi curiously since she's never met her. So you're Ami, huh? Your brother told me everything. I'm glad you're safe. You don't feel strange or anything, do you? No, I'm fine. I'm just a little tired and sleepy. That's so. You might be suffering from mild... Your guess Di is as fucking good as mine. Um. Dysautonomia after you... what After all you went through. Oh, exhaustion. <laughs> hey, Nanami, you should get her checked out at a hospital. That's what I said! Uh, I can arrange an appointment for her. Alright, one to five. How do we feel about that? I mean, I like the whole arranging an appointment thing, but I also don't necessarily like having to talk to Oya anymore. Three. Okay. You could be... You could look a bit more concerned right now. You're her brother, ain't you? Um... You don't have to worry so much. I'm fine, really, so... Get out. <laughs> uh, it's just to be safe, Ami. Come on, I'll make your your worry what brother happy. Oh. Hey. <laughs> okay. I'll go in for an examination just for you. Sheesh, you guys. Uh decides it. Uh then let's get going before they stop seeing patients for the day. Uh, Nanami, did you already tell her about Natsumi? Yeah, I told her. Yeah? Then let's go visit her while we're at it, too. I'm sure she'd be relieved if Ami came to see her. Yeah. Poor Ami. We all leave the bar. So, right now we've got... We're taking our little sister on a date, and Oi is once again third-wheeling. Um, Oi leads us over to the hospital where Aunt Natsumi is staying. After visiting her, Ami goes in for her, for her own examination. They decide to keep her at the hospital overnight for the exam. Convenient. <laughs> now we can spend the night with Seiji. Um, that night, after hospital visiting hours are over, we return to Kisoji Station. A pleasant breeze fl blows through the area. It's nice and cool out tonight. Are you worried about Ami, Anami? I checked uh, to make sure the hospital room had no mirrors and the nurse kept is keeping watch on her. She'll be fine, yeah? Yeah. I don't like taking my eyes off of her, but she'll probably be fine for now. If Kakuya's gonna kidnap her again, she'd have her play a game first. If you're that worried about her, you can go see her first thing in the morning. Anyway, I'm heading home. Tomorrow's gonna be busy and I wanna get some sleep. 
gonna go see a forensic researcher and verify that report on the case of the f cause of the fire. The killer Peach did that, yeah? Let me know if you find anything. I'm not supposed to show investigation material to outsiders, though. You're seriously gonna try and pull that card now? Nah, you got me there. <laughs> I'll contact you tomorrow. See ya! Oi is so bad at being a cop that, like, occasionally it's like, eh, maybe she's okay-ish. And then she does something awful again, so, you know. Mm -hmm. Oi disappears towards the ticket gates. Huh? Where did Omanome go? He was just here. I guess I'll look for him. Hey, boyfriend. Where you at? Examine building down the street. It's a building by the station with offices and cram schools. Looks like people are still inside at this hour. A few of the rooms still have lights on. Horrible. Amanome comes walking back from over there. Oh, did Oi leave already? I didn't get to say goodbye. Not right there. <laughs> what were you doing? Ford got out and I escaped the house. I got a call from my pop, so I figured I'd better answer it. He wasn't furious? Oh, he was. Just about yelled my ear off. <laughs> it was annoying, so I hung up on him. <laughs> ah, I love this man. That's just gonna make it worse. No worries, pops has a soft spot for me. He might knock me around a bit, but after that, it'll be water under the bridge. Mm, not sure if that's letting you off easy or being harsh. Anyway. Sleepover? Um, you've got some time to kill, yeah? Come with me for a bit? What's this all of a sudden? Is this a date? Um, I'm stressed after being under surveillance for so long. I'm gonna let off some steam. Quite oh, honestly, boy. they're making this the jokes way too easy. <laughs> yeah. I'll trade you, so come with me, alright? <laughs> Five! <laughs> oh, looks like you're all for it. Crazy look in his eyes. <laughs> well done, let's get going. Uh, time to fuck. <laughs> we pass through the shopping district by Kisoji Station and arrive at a high-class club. Normally, miners wouldn't be allowed inside, but I guess Amanomi is an exception. We grab seats farther inside, and hostesses quickly position themselves at Amanomi's side. He eats and drinks for a bit while chatting up the hostesses. Then, as if remembering something, he makes a phone call. After a while, a well-dressed old man comes up to us. Because this doesn't look like anything at all between yeah. the two of us. Like, why are we sitting like that? <laughs> <laughs> why are we sitting like that? Anyway. Also, the fact that we took off our sunglasses, like... <laughs> uh, okay. This is gay as shit, but that's okay. Um, yes. I don't know my host okay. voices feet up on the table. <laughs> then as he munches on some fruit, he gazes down at the man kneeling before him. Uh, hey, Yorita. Uh, you heard what I said, yeah? I I yes. Amanome's gotta have some kind of dirt on this guy. He smiles submissively at Amanome, a kid who's maybe as old as his own grandson. About the redevelopment of Shinsu Station. Mind telling me the bidding price that your company offered? But, Mr. Amanome, that's a company secret. Oh, is that right? If it's if that's a secret, then I guess I won't keep this a secret. Amano Man takes a photo out of his breast pocket. It shows the, the man fuck? walking out of a hotel with a young woman. 
Ew. Cheating on your wife? What a horrible guy. I wonder what she'd think. Bitch, why did you bring us to your to work? <laughs> I like, thought we were having a good time. Uh, what did you think was about to happen when this guy came up? <laughs> I don't know, honestly. Uh... Um, isn't your daughter about to start middle school? Be a rough time to have to learn about this. Aww. This is the worst date, where's Mulan? Hey, Hajime. She's got a perfect place on the couch to sit, you know, next to us. So, um, since we're not sitting down on the couch and instead doing the gay perch, um... <laughs> the man remains silent and Amanome turns towards me. What do you think of this scumbag? I guess Amanome wants me to help threaten the guy. What should I say? I mean, even if I say the wrong thing, it'll only make Amanome mad. It's no big deal, I'll just say whatever. Uh, it's giving me a warning. I yeah. don't think it's uh, <laughs> quite a no problem thing. Uh, yeah, what do you think of this guy? What do I think of this guy? This is what he deserves. Okay. It is what he deserves, so... Probably deserves worse than that. Let's be honest. This is what he deserves. If you were my dad, I'd kick his ass. Right. Amanome grins, satisfied. Then he turns back to the man. Hey, Yorita. Tell me the company's secret, and I'll just keep this little incident here a secret, too. Everyone's happy as long as we both stay quiet. But, but... I'll even give you a reward. You're tied out of money, though. Right now, yeah? You gotta pay off that new building loan you just got, right? What? How'd you know about that? I've researched every last little thing about you. If you're not convinced, maybe you'd like me to tell you what you had for lunch one week ago. This man was so bored during lockdown. <laughs> the man's expression slowly gives way to despair. I guess I should give him another push. Maybe I'll try butting in. Leave him be. Okay. I have no idea what they're talking about, so I'll just leave this domino mat. I decide to eat fruit and keep to myself. <laughs> this is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <sighs> the man looks at me uncomfortably. <sighs> I'm gonna my laughs quietly. I just realized, like, we literally are sitting like we are the trophy wife, you know, like the whole, yeah. like, oh my god. Yeah, no, 110% weird. I'm gonna waste my wife right here. Uh, <laughs> but, Mr. Amanoi. I can't betray my company like that. I'm begging you, please understand. Oh, you can't betray your company, but your wife? That one's okay. The man starts bleeding. He sounds like he's about to cry. Bust his balls. Seiji. Hey, knock it off already. Amanome coldly looks down at the man's white head. It's business. Either you sell me the information or I crush you. Pick one. Here's a piece. You're supposed to be my elder, aren't you? Don't you have enough experience to know you're not getting out of this by saying please? Give it a rest, jeez. Amano and I suddenly yells out. Then he glances over at me. Alright. Am I turning it up to 11? Kick the couch in silence. Okay. Boo. Doesn't sound like as much fun. Was 
Without saying a word, I kicked the leather couch over. Oh. Yeah. That's a little bit different than... Uh, yeah, than just prompt. kicking it. Um. Yeah. The man shudders as if an electrical shock ran through him. I feel kind of bad for him. So basically, Amanome either came here to just have us kick a couch once, um, or to show off. Uh, all right. Mr. Amanome, you, you win. Uh, once the bidding price is fixed, I'll contact you. And in exchange, that photo. Yeah, I know. Once you contact me, I'll take responsibility and dispose of it in the digital backups. I can trust you, right? Uh, as far as you can throw him, but... Yeah, of course. The, if there's no trust, then what's the point of making a deal? And the money? Give me the account information and I'll send it. I hope you're looking forward to it. You have to have massive balls to have to be, like, coerced into this and then go, But you also promised money. <laughs> oh, okay. The man finishes talking with Amanome and quickly leaves if he's, as if he's fleeing a crime scene. Okay. Alright, that was a huge success. I didn't think it'd go that well. That was a good performance, Hajime. Thanks. After a while, Amanome and I leave the club. So basically, we sat there, made out for a while, threatened a guy, ate some fruit, made out some more, and left. I have no clue how much Sounds. it cost. Sounds like a good night. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, it was kind of hot. So, you know. <laughs> um, I just took Amanome up on his offer and let him handle it all. Yeah, we are a little strapped for cash right now, considering we have a grown man who keeps He sings to taking... us, too. Oh. For a while now, Amanome has been happily singing a song that sounds vaguely familiar. The tune. It's Momo Kuruse's Wander Rabbits. Why is he... He's having so much fun singing that I didn't want to interrupt, but I guess I should stop him. Hey, I'm a moment. Oh. Huh? What? Do you like that song? Yeah, it's a good song. I don't care about Momo Kuruse at all, but I love Wander Rabbits. <laughs> I'll sing it to myself when I'm in a good mood. Girl, you've met her. You know exactly. <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> you've got some strange taste for a Yakuza kid. Why are you so prejudiced? Momo Kuruse, Hazuki's still in a coma. I wonder when she'll be able to sing Wander Rabbits again. What's scowling, Hajime? Once the Kakuya thing is dealt with, bother her and Natsumi will be healed. Both her I... and Natsumi will be healed. I'm... <laughs> My brain is starting to combine words. I guess it was obvious what I was thinking about. So we may as well party it up tonight. Hajime, how about, well, Hajime, how about one more bar? Oh, pass. I'm getting tired. Hey, what are you? A toddler? It's very barely past midnight. Shut up. I didn't get much sleep yesterday. My guy, he has been through a lot. Yeah. Like, I know you've been cooped up and you're... <laughs> like, this man just wants to go everywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anywhere to not be home. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, yeah, we just had a lot happen. Uh, yeah, I guess you've had it pretty rough recently. You know, you could just come hang out at our place. Exactly. I've got these. Um, help us relax. <laughs> unwind. 
let's as well call it a night. To be continued after we avenge Marahashi and Natsumi recovers. Yeah, sounds good. Then I'll be able to empty my head and laugh it up with a, like a moron with you. Who knows when that'll be, though. Not too far off, man. We'll finish this before summer break's over. That's right. Is it summer break right now? I've been so busy, I totally forgot. What, seriously? Well, I guess you've always had a one-track mind. I bet most of our classmates are studying their asses off for entry exams right about now. <laughs> Seems unreal. I guess it's because my personal reality has been so messed up lately. Things like summer break and school that are normal for everyone else seem totally alien. After all this is finally over, will I even be able to return to my old life? Alright, let's split up. When we meet up again tomorrow afternoon, I'll go with you to see Ami. What are you gonna do now? Go home? Ah, not a chance. Once I go back, I'm gonna be under surveillance again. I'll stay in some random hotel until all of this is finished. You could stay at my place. <gasps> Boo! No! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hard no on that one. Can I stay at the hotel with you? Yeah, like... <laughs> that I, place old. Literally, I cannot blame him considering the fact it is 100% an, a bachelor pad and Ami was just trapped in that mirror for like two weeks. Like, Yeah, it's a bachelor pad <laughs> and it's haunted. Yeah. Uh <laughs> <laughs> there, I don't think there's really anything we can sell it on other than we're there. Um. Is that not enough for you, CG? <laughs> um, that place is old, cramped, and smelly. Might be fine for a tough guy like you, but someone more refined like myself is impo it's impossible. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Do whatever you want. Seiji a pillow princess? <laughs> Is that what I'm oh, here? undoubtedly. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks for the offer, though. <laughs> All right. Good night. Don't even offer to take me to your hotel room. It's fine. Um, I'm gonna know my heads to the ticket gates. Guess I'll head back too, to my old, cramped, smelly, haunted apartment. No. <sighs> Ditch me, huh? My apartment has a mirror that connects to the realm of the dead. Feels weird to sleep in a place with something that, like that. With something that has something... It feels weird to sleep in a place with something like that sitting in it, but... I had to See? figure that one out. <laughs> it's okay, we have one more choice and then it's the end of this day, so okay. we, we should call it, because we're both. Yeah. <laughs> it's um... late. After all I've gone through, this is nothing. I've survived all that for this long. I don't know about the other spirits, but Cluckley wants to play her game with me. So she probably won't harm me directly. That's what I've decided to think anyway. I realize it's a pretty bold stance to take. I eat some food, take a hot shower, then start getting ready for bed. I think I'll be able to sleep well for once. That you thought. Go to bed? Mm-hmm. Time to turn in for tonight? I don't trust it. Are we actually going to bed? Collapsing on the bed, I shut my eyes. Maybe because I haven't been getting much sleep. My consciousness quickly melts into darkness. All right, so we'll end here for tonight. Next stream is Tuesday, ten o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock Pacific. Um, we will. You gonna... I'm gonna stream because it's Fourth of July. Um, oh. So if you'd like to join me, feel free. Um, but if not, if obviously if you've got Fourth of July plans and all of that, um, please feel free to do that. Um, but I will be streaming for a distraction. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
You got any announcements? Nope. Cool. Um, yeah, see you on Tuesday um, if you come to join us. If you don't join us, um, watch out on the fireworks. Don't lose a finger. Um, also, skip the fireworks. Um, you know, they're just awful. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I guess if we're going to talk about fireworks for a second. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you are lighting off fireworks, please make sure that you are being safe and responsible. Um, make sure that you have a bucket full of water. It should be able to fully submerge all fireworks, not necessarily at once. But every firework that you're lighting off needs to be able to be submerged in water. Take it from somebody who lives in forest fire country. Uh, please drown that shit after it is done lighting off that is the safest bet mm -hmm. <laughs> so you do not light yourself or other people on fire um so yeah bucket of water have a hose ready if that is something that you are participating in also don't be a dick and i would say like you know you need to stop lighting them off by like 10 p.m at the latest because it's a tuesday especially because it's a tuesday this year everyone's got work on Wednesday, so don't yeah. be a dick. I've never understood, like, why do fireworks the night of, and then everyone has to go back to work the next day? It makes no sense to me. But, um, yeah. Also, dogs, people with PTSD, all that, not really into fireworks, so, um, you know, do kind of be aware of your surroundings, um, that it may not be uh particularly restful for the people around you so yep. all right anything else yeah shoot all right um well have a good night see you tuesday and thanks for hanging out tonight bye y'all